a review of the Checkpoint Swing Laser from Eyeline Golf coming to you right after this. Hey guys, welcome to the channel. It is Christmas Eve 2020. So first of all, we hope you all have a safe and happy holiday season. And thanks so much for being a part of this channel so far this year. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. That helps us grow the channel, produce new content just like this. So without further ado, last point, if you haven't already checked that little bell, please be sure to do so. Helps keep you informed when we do produce a new video. Otherwise, let's get into some swing laser information. So laser trainers are not new. I know they've been around a while. I remember years ago going through the golfing machine authorized instructor program and we were all given a green laser and shown how to trace the base of the swing plane. And that is definitely a benefit of any type of laser. We're just gonna go through this one from Eyeline to show you how it works. <coughs> so we're gonna show you some close-ups. We're gonna show you what comes with this. You get the clip with two lasers, a tracing line piece of um, some sort of fabric, and it comes with the carry bag. So one of the real benefits, especially if you're a beginner or you're even intermediate level, is learning an awareness of swing plane and how that affects where the club travels through space and how that affects the strike of the golf ball. And that's a really good reason to invest in any sort of laser, but we're going to show you this one. So here's the main body of the laser. You've, you've got your clip and your two lasers. All you need to do is take this round section, slide it onto the very base of your shaft, then just slide it up. And at some point it will get pretty snug and that's where you just want to stop. So once you get it secured up on the top of the shaft, you'll see this silver button for both lasers. All you do is twist that until it seats and it automatically turns on each laser. Now because with this laser you can actually twist it, you can adjust it to either trace the base of the swing plane, which would be the intersection of the shaft into the ground, or you could twist it more where it lines up with the sweet spot of the, the club face. So I'm going to keep it pretty much on the sweet spot for now. So a good place to start would be P1 to P2 or address the shaft first parallel. And all you have to do is keep the laser inside the guide. And so this is not quite the P2, but if I get it to there, um, unfortunately the, the track is not long enough and you would, you would need a, a very large room to continually see where it goes if you're looking in that direction. But all you have to do is again, get started, follow the track, and then about P2, roughly, you're gonna see that these lasers would line up with each other in a straight line, which would be parallel to your target line. So again, if you wanted to develop a really good takeaway, all you have to do is trace right along the guide. Now you'll notice as I do this, even though the laser is pointing straight down the guide, the club head is moving interior because we're swinging on an arc. Now, as you progress further and start to get to P2, again, briefly, these lasers would be lining up pretty much straight in a straight line. As we go up higher, we're gonna have to use your vision and kind of twist your head to the left until you get to the point where you can see this other laser. And so now we'd be roughly at P3. Now we can go to three to back to shaft parallel. And then this end's gonna pick up, go all the way to the ball. And you'll notice after this point, this laser's gonna trace 
pretty much like a 45 degree angle. And I wouldn't really get too concerned about where this one points because then you're going to have to be looking over here. So a couple things I like about this particular laser or set of lasers is, again, first of all, you can bury the bottom laser to point at the base of the plane line or at the sweet spot. Second of all, because they're green, they tend to show up better than red, especially in high light conditions. And a lot of times you can train with these outdoors as well. As long as you're not like in direct sunlight, you can see these pretty well. But now let's turn the lights off, you'll get a really good view. So now without the lights, you can really see how easy this is to get started and how you have really good quality feedback. And that's what building a good golf swing is all about, is developing the sensations of where you want the club to move through space and then using feedback to help you train those feels so that when you get on the golf course, you can go by feel and not so much by trying to artificially place the club in some position. You've done it so many times that it's become a feel. So feedback is key whenever we're trying to develop any type of motions based on swing plane. Now, I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to hit golf balls with this because it could slip around. But I've got a little wiffle ball here, and I think you might be able to practice with a wiffle ball, especially little short shots, and start to develop that feel with contact. And then that's going to help you translate from just a pretend type of swing to teaching your brain what it feels like to run into a ball. Of course, I had that on a, on a little short tee to keep, keep it from running into this guide here. Just remember that the keys to any type of training aid like this is to develop awareness and feel. And don't be afraid to go slow. That's one of the big keys. Also, another benefit of this, if you, you know, kind of make a mistake, you're gonna see it immediately. So if the shaft gets really flat or really steep in any point of the swing, See the shaft got steep. That's going to generally tend that type of motion into the ball. And vice versa, if I got it really flat, it might be okay, but I'd, I'd have to figure out how to save it. So this will give you a good plain vanilla, so to speak, swing plane feel. And then all you have to do again is just watch where it goes, see what adjustments you need to make. And it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but if you can stay in that track, you know you've done a pretty good job. But if I were a beginner, I would spend a lot of time just in this little section and developing again that feel. And then move along, make it a little longer, make it a little bit longer, keep using feedback. And this is gonna help you, again, especially if you're a beginner, you're gonna get miles ahead of the game because you won't have all these funny things we see people do. So this can be a really good training tool. It can help you feel exactly where you want the club to go. Gives you instant feedback if you've made a mistake. And if you've got enough space, you can practice indoors, especially this time of year. You don't need to get outside a lot anyway. So let's spend the next month or so, if you have one of these, working on these little sections and refining what you do. So if you have one of these, comment below. Let us know, did you like it? Did it make sense? Is it helping you? Let us know what you think about it. By the way, this is not a paid endorsement. I'm just doing this literally out of my own pocket. Bought this for full price, no discount, but I want to show it to you, give you some ideas on how you can train things indoors with good feedback. If you like this video, give us a like, and thanks for watching.